ashers, safety emblems, hardware, frame integrity, uh, tire pressures, tire wheel hard hardware, and, and of course ground engaging uh, parts like our cutting edges, ripper teeth, things like that, and it can assure ourselves uh, that this machine is safe and ready to, to, to start our day with and things like that, then a lot of times it requires a, a warm up. The machine might need to be started and warmed up when it's safe to do so, making sure everybody's out of areas like, uh, like again, I used this as an example, with this blade being in the bank position in a service position like this, it's a pretty good opportunity to get pinched here if you would get up there and start that machine and maybe crawl, crawl out here and decide you're going to grease the machine or whatever and get in between places like this. And it's an opportunity if somebody crawled up on the machine and was thinking they're going to help you and could hit the articulation lever, or could hit a blade lift or whatever and, and pull that into you and squeeze and things. So you got to make sure, you got to be thinking all the time about where your implements, where your tools are and who's, who's around while that engine's warming up and things like that. It's always best advised if you're going to be milling around your machine and that's better to do it before, it's, before you start the machine is what we kind of suggest to you. Uh, again, uh, all these motor graders articulate. They have the secondary steering capability to frame steer and when they do so uh, and when they're, when they're running in that, these clearances between the cab and the front of the tandems and things like that really close right up. There's just not enough room in there for a person to fit in between there and you can have problems right away. Uh, safety warning labels, things like that. You'll see a lot of tags on the machine suggesting uh, lift points, chain points, things like that. Try to save them if you can. Uh, there's a lot of rotation and uh, new hires come in and everything else. They might be taking over your grader and things like that. And without, without the guidance of some of these decals and points, uh, they, they aren't going to know what they're for. And maybe they need that to help them. Maybe if, if it's going to be transported, put on a semi, whatever, uh, they need those, all those decals left in place if you, if you would, so that they'd always be able to have those for references at a glance. As I uh, finished my walk around, I've looked again, like Russell mentioned and suggested to you, you know, we want to look for leaks and things like that, pools of oil under the engine compartment, under the, under the working tools, under the front end and things like that. Now's the time to correct that. Uh, and of course checking for oil levels as well as soon as we're done with it and have corrected or remedied any of those kind of problems. These uh, uh, fittings and hoses on most of these motor graders anymore are what we call a, a flat faced o-ring faced seal type hose. We don't use uh, uh, the 37 degree flare fittings anymore on very many places anymore and, and where I'm going with that is, is uh, a fitting that is finger tight, really nicely finger tight, will, will uh, seal at the system pressures and circuit pressures hydraulically on these machines and that and as they loosen a little bit, get warm, get cold, vibration, hoses wiggling, things like that, they'll start to developing small little leaks in that. And where I'm going with that is, is that it, if you look for an evidence of just a little weepage, maybe ever so subtle, just a little bit, and there may be a little dust collected from the day before you run the machine, you probably shouldn't be seeing that. You shouldn't be seeing that uh, uh, grouted in and, and, and uh, dusted in around that and a dirty fitting like that. If you, did, if, if you do, you might want to uh, take it under advisement that it could be starting to get loose and getting ready to blitz. Now, that O-ring will hold pressure up to the point until you get flow, and once you get a pretty good stream of oil in that, what it does is that oil under pressure will cut that O-ring. It'll actually erode that. Some people say it blitzes them. It'll just it'll blow them out or whatever. They will not tighten up and reseal. A lot of guys will try to put a wrench on them and, and uh, and hope that they'll reseal and they won't. It's going to require releasing the energy, sh shutting the machine down, releasing the energy, the hydraulic pressure on that circuit, and replacing that O-ring in that before it'll ever tighten up. Okay? Any questions so far? And again, I can't reiterate enough that if you do these, some of these practices that are going to that are going to save you physically, just like this blade being put up in bank position in service blade change service position like that, that you may want to put some safety stands underneath them and that to 
in case a hose would fail or a packing, cylinder packing or anything like that, that would allow that blade to drift and you'd happen to be in behind there and it wouldn't be a good thing. What could be good to save you physically and back and everything else could also be the thing that could, uh, that could cause a serious, serious injury or death by being pinched in behind. And uh, now on greasing on the machine, you guys probably set up your own policies on greasing a machine and that. I'm from the north, I'm from Moline, Illinois and that, and it, it's, it's cool at night or cool during the winter or whatever. We have a, we kind of have a rule of thumb that when the machine's been ran for a day or whatever, and it's been exercised, all the joints, all the pins, ball joints, trunnion caps, balls, lift cylinder ends and everything, when they've been exercised and worked, they're typically going to be warmer and have a better chance of accepting grease at the end of a day. Now, I don't know, uh, you know, if it matters that much here when it doesn't get down near to zero or whatever, but it's going to, it's going to matter when it gets down to freezing and that, and you'll actually get a better uh, result in greasing at night when all those parts have been exercised and a little bit warmer. It'll accept grease and bathe completely all the way around that surface and give you a better result and a lot of times just a shot or two will help you. There still are service points on these motor graders. Every ball joint on a circle side shift, blade lift cylinders, the trunnion point for the draft frame mounting point in the front, uh, nothing in the circle anymore. These have replacement wear shoes in here that we suggest to you keep them dry because they're self-lubricating and if you put any kind of a lubricant on there then it becomes an attractant that, that grinds down to like a valve grinding compound and actually accelerates the wear on these shoes and it doesn't improve circle torque. A lot of guys think that it will. You know, a lot of guys are trying to swing material around, circling on the go and things like that and they want to improve circle torque and that. You just uh, simply have got to release the load enough to let it physically be able to do that and uh, don't try to rely on lubricants on these surfaces because it, it just accelerates the wear on those shoes, things like that. We try, to, we try to make it as easy as we can for you about grease points on these machines in that it, they're at ground level so we're not stooping over very far and the highest we'll have to reach when this is in its normal position would be the, the uh, uh, blade, blade lift anchor points that are still going to be able to be reached by from the ground. So we're trying, we've got safety in mind, trying to keep you from crawling all over the machine and you're not hands free when you do that. You're carrying a grease gun and a grease rag and you're crawling up on a machine, that's not a good thing. So everything's meant to be ground level. All right, you've heard from Russell, he talked about um, walk arounds and safety. Marv talked about walk arounds and safety. Nesto talked about walk around and safety. So what do you think I'm going to talk about? Walk around and safety, right. Now, why do we do a walk around? There's two reasons, right? Yesterday I was told there's actually three reasons. Anybody know what the number one reason is? Safety. safety. What's the number two reason? Safety. What's the number three reason? Safety. Well, safety also, but my experience has been that all these machines break when they're in the barn overnight. Whatever gets broke, the lights, the windows, the mirror happens after you parked it in the barn or after somebody else parked it in the barn, right? Nobody knows how it happened, it just happened. So the other reason for safety is you want to know when that mirror gets broke, you want to know when the cutting edge gets broke, you want to know if you got a flat tire and you also want to